Hello and welcome to Cutaneous Lymphoma Treatment video series presented to you by Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation. In a series of six short videos, we will provide information for patients and their loved ones about the common treatments of cutaneous lymphomas, and we will review how and why they are used. In the first video, we will have a general overview of treatment strategies. In second video, we will discuss skin-directed therapies commonly utilized for limited or localized skin involvement. And in the third video, we will review those used for patients with generalized skin involvement. In video number four, we will review systemic therapies that come as pills or self-injectable medications. And video number five will focus on systemic therapies administered in infusion centers, such as photophoresis and chemotherapy. The last video will cover emerging treatments and clinical trials. My name is Neda Nickback, and I run the Dermatology Cutaneous Lymphoma Clinic at Thomas Jefferson University Hospital in Philadelphia. In this first video of the six-part video series, we will start with an overview of treatment strategies. Cutaneous lymphomas consist of a group of rare malignancies. They are caused because some blood cells that normally live in the skin become cancer cells. These lymphomas tend to be chronic, meaning that once they happen, they tend to persist. Unfortunately, there's no cure for most of them. In addition, there is not a single approach to treat them, unlike some other types of skin cancer that can be simply cured by cutting off the tumor. Instead, multiple treatment approaches are available that can be used either in combination or alone. There's no right or wrong answer in selection of the appropriate treatment for each patient. An ideal treatment regimen is tailored to the patient and disease activity, and its, develop and its development usually requires an active collaboration between the patient and the treating physician. I think it is important for patients to develop an understanding of the type of treatments available so that they can be well informed when working with their physicians to devise their treatment strategies. And this is the purpose of providing you these video series. Many factors need to be considered before selecting a treatment regimen, including stage of disease. Treatment used in early stages are mainly directed to skin, while treatments for late stages are mainly systemic uh, therapies. Goals of the therapy are important to discuss. Are we trying to eliminate all visible rash on the skin? Are we trying to reduce symptoms such as itch and discomfort? Or are we trying to destroy a stubborn tumor? or simply using treatment for maintenance or preventive purposes. For example, in the case of a patient with aggressive disease who goes into remission but requires continued treatment. One of the most important factors in, in selecting the treatment regimen is to consider which treatments have been used previously. Many patients may receive multiple different types of treatment over the years. It will be a great idea for each patient to keep records or a diary of the type of treatments they receive, the dates and the duration of time they received any given treatment, and why the treatment had stopped. This information can be very helpful to your physician. For example, the physician is less likely to choose a treatment that was tried in the past but was discontinued because of a severe side effect or because it was not effective, the physician is more likely to choose a treatment that was previously tried and was discontinued because the patient did very well and no longer needed treatment. Cost and insurance coverage or lack of it and accessibility of the treatment are also considered when selecting the right regimen 
for therapy. For example, for a patient who has difficulty with mobility or a patient who lives far from the office, frequent visits for light therapy may not be an option. Finally, the health condition, age, and lifestyle of the patients should be considered. Some medications may not be appropriate, for example, for a patient with cardiac disease, and travel can limit a patient's access to infusion center. So putting all of this together, the discussions to have with your physician before selecting a treatment should include knowing your diagnosis and the type of cutaneous lymphoma that you have. It's important to know the stage, the stage of your cutaneous lymphoma since treatments for early and late stage can be very different. You need to discuss the side effects of the treatment. Some side effects are likely and some are not. Some are reversible and some may not be reversible. You need to know what the treatment entails. Where is it administered? Do you need to come to dermatology office, to the infusion center? How long does the treatment last? Are we going to have a, a six month treatment regimen device uh, for you, or are we going to continue treatment until we see the effect? And certainly you need to know how frequently the treatment is administered. Do, are you going to receive weekly infusions or is it happening once a month? And finally, the cost of the treatment and the insurance coverage should be discussed. So as we continue, as we continue, we're going to discuss therapies that are directed towards the skin. They include topical treatments such as lotions and creams and phototherapies or radiation that are applied to skin directly. These treatments are often selected for patients with early stage disease. We will also review systemic therapies, including pills, injectables and infusions that are often selected for patients with late stage disease or large areas of skin involvement.